thank you, and thank you very much uh, to Future of Places for inviting me to this important event. Uh, as you said, uh, I'm not really here in my capacity as French ambassador to Sweden, but as the representative of the country that will host COP21 in Paris, in Le Bourget to be more precise, north of Paris from the 30th of November to the 11th of December. We all know what the stakes of climate change are, and since I don't have much time, what I want to do is basically two things. First, give you briefly, from a French perspective, a sense of where we are in the run-up to the Paris conference, and then, obviously, share some thoughts on the city side of the climate change equation. Why are local entities so important if we want to fix a global uh, uh, if we want to fix global warming and how we see their association to the Paris package. So first on our plan to Paris, our aim is to achieve what we now call the Paris Climate Alliance with four components. First, a universal and legally binding agreement. And this, of course, will be the core of the Paris package because it is the key to avoid free riding and build a level playing field. And we need, in particular, in the agreement, uh, a strong system of MRV, measuring, reporting, and verification of the commitments. As you know, a draft text uh, of the agreement has already been discussed. It is way too long. It keeps uh, too many options open at this point of time, and we have four, five months left through formal meeting in the UNFCCC and informal meeting uh, in between to achieve a consensus. It is obviously necessary to accelerate this negotiation, and my uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Fabius, who will host and chair the, the COP21, consider that we should try to have a kind of pre-agreement in October. We know it will be hard because of the huge political and economic stake of this negotiation, traditional UN negotiation by consensus, uh, and with a very strong north-south dimension. But at the same time, when you hear the statement of the world leaders, in particular from the big emitting countries, you can consider that the political context has never been more favorable for, for an agreement. And I can tell you that the mobilization of the French authorities, or president or minister of foreign affairs, is really massive to get this agreement. The second element of the alliance will be the package of national commitment of greenhouse gas reductions. What we decided at the Warsaw COP, perhaps you remember, was that it's a, now a bottom-up approach in the negotiation, <laughs> that the parties would table their intended commitment, what we call INDC in the jargon, as early as possible in 2015, so that we would have enough time to uh, assess the collective ambition of this commitment. At this moment, the situation is that approximately uh, 40 countries representing something like one third of the world emission have tabled their commitments, including the EU, minus 40% in 2030, uh, the USA, uh, Russia, Canada, and we are awaiting, I'm not following that on a day-to-day -day basis, but the commitment of China and Japan very soon. And of course, the China's commitment, we know approximately what it will be, because they have already concluded an agreement with the US last September. <laughs> Uh, the problem, of course, is when we add up all these commitments, there is a strong risk uh, that they won't uh, be consistent with the objective of the plus two degree. Uh, I won't have time to elaborate uh, on that. This is the heart of the negotiation. But what we should have in mind is that Paris is not the end of the process. Paris is the, is the start. There will be down payment on the commitment for 2025, 2030. But of course, what we need to do is build a process where the country we will be able to uh, add new commitment in the future and to create cycles of commitment with system of no backsliding and, and so on. The third element of the alliance will be the financial package. As in every negotiation, we are going to Addis Ababa soon. The finance is absolutely a, a, a huge factor in the success. And here, the developing and emerging countries have high expectations. You remember, we made commitments in Copenhagen in 2009 um, on the transfer of $100 billion a year from the north to the south of 
public and private money for fighting climate change, for mitigation and adaptation. And we have to deliver. We have to give assurances in Paris and before Paris that this money will in fact be transferred. There has been a very important signal last year with the capitalization, the first capitalization of the Green Climate Fund was $10 billion. Uh, and it's a good signal, but of course we have to continue working on that. And finally, the fourth element of the alliance is what we call the action agenda. And it covers uh, the wide range of commitments from the civil society, from business, from local government, and other actors of the city, uh, civil society that will build on the initiative that have been showcased, you remember, last September in the UN summit convoked by Mr. Ban Ki-moon. And it should contribute to sending the signal that both government and non-governmental stakeholders are determined to carry out the, the transition toward a low carbon economy. So with the Peruvians, the host of the COP20, uh, we have initiated what we call the Lima Paris action plan to uh, <coughs> encourage initiative holders to speed up their work and to report their result in Paris. And that offers me a transition to the second part of my intervention. We all want uh, the 2015 Paris climate deal to be a game changer, changer, a turning point. But there is a key condition, and it is that the two main actors in the real world, which is business and local entities, uh, be a key part of it. And we can see two main reasons for that. The first one is that we need to be in a win-win mindset because uh, we are building economies and cities that will be more energy efficient, more secure, more innovative and cleaner. And so the new lo low carbon world is uh, above all a huge opportunity and a profitable venture. And this is the spirit in what uh, was written the uh, new, econo new climate economy report a few months ago, commissioned in particular by Sweden. And cities can help convince skeptics that climate action is a good deal, shift risk perception, uh, and above all, showcase uh, success stories by example. The number two reason is that the, the skill and creativities and talent of the cities and regions are part of the solution to fix global warming. The governments are a little more than honest brokers. Our negotiation, if it is successful, will uh, establish the right kind of multilateral framework that will in turn impose constraints to the countries and help uh, create through standards, through taxes, through uh, carbon market, uh, help create a, a price of carbon but at the end of the day, it is the actors in the real world, and again, mainly the city, the region, and the companies that will work out the concrete solution. So a word finally on what has been decided to structure the association of cities to the preparation of COP21. The basis, as I mentioned, is the Lima Paris Action Plan, launched to cover all the cooperative initiatives proposed by the non-governmental actors. And to be able to follow these initiatives, a data-based has been developed called NASCA, Non-State Actor Zone for Climate Action, but NASCA is a Peruvian uh, important uh, symbol, as you know. Already thousands of initiatives, I don't have the latest uh, record, but uh, two, weeks ago, two months ago it was more than 1,500. Thousands of initiatives from local authorities, companies and others have been identified. And the cities can engage in different ways. First of all, by committing directly uh, their toward their own, uh, on their own greenhouse gases reduction, but also by taking sectorial commitments, uh, for example, in public transport, in waste management, in efficiency of housing. And this commitment should be at the horizon of 2020, 2030, like the government, but also, if possible, be accompanied by aspirational commitment for 2050. And also, like the commitment of the state, they should be transparent, measurable, and verifiable. The other way of committing is to uh, engage in large-scale cooperative and multi-stakeholder initiatives. 
there are already many networks that promote such initiative, just to give you an idea, and uh, it could be uh, completed. Uh, the Compact of Maya, the Compact of Region, the Covenants of Maya, the Rockefeller Foundation, the Carbon Neutral City Alliance, the WWF Earth Hour City Challenge, but also many international sectoral initiative to which the city could become member uh, on transport and climate change, on the CCAC solid waste initiative, and so on. It's just a few examples. The third kind of thing the cities could do is help the emergence of new partnership to support knowledge, capacity building, and financing in the developing countries. And finally, the fourth one, it's very important, it's political. Uh, it's very useful for us government if the cities support actively and politically the implementation in their respective countries of pro-climate public policies and of a constructive position in the negotiation. So we hope to be able to harvest all these initiatives or at least their first result in Paris. In between there is a lot of work to do and many meetings to assess the progress of the action agenda there has been, on the 26th of March, the uh, EU capitals and large cities meeting on climate, where the mayor of Stockholm, Mrs. von Gott, took part. Tomorrow, it's a world summit on climate and territories in Lyon, in France. Next week, uh, it will be the climate leaders from America in Ontario. At the end of September, the World Summit of Region in Sevilla. And the no end of November, it will be Africa cities and so on and so on. And all these meetings will be, in a way, a prefiguration of the action day that will take place in parallel and in connection with the COP21 in Paris. I'm not sure of the date, but the first week of December. And that will be the occasion to capture the magnitude of the mobilization uh, and the credibility of the commitment uh, of all the actors. Because be beyond the agreement itself, we need to feel as soon as the 12th of December that there is a, a new deal, a turning point in the way all actors deal with climate change and that the balance of power is now on the side of the green economy. All in all, 20,000 delegates uh, are expected in Paris and also 20,000 representatives of the civil society, including thousands from regions and city, and among them, I'm sure, many Swedish. So thank you. Uh, I hope you are convinced that we look forward to working with you as president of the COP to help create the new sustainable places. Thank you. Thank you.